eliminated it. Absolutely eliminated it. The chain was sharp. So there was only two other things it could have been. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Morning, guys. Hey. Daily ritual. We're going to go and feed uh, the cows and milk Betty. So we thought we'd bring you along for the ride. Welcome. Here we all are. Hey, Maggie. Hey, let's go. Come on, kids. Where's the lamb? Lamb, lamb. Jazzy. Come on. Yeah, my own. So that's just hot water, well, warm water. Clean all the dirt off. Contrary to popular belief, we don't pull the teats down. It's just a squeeze at the top to block the milk into the teat and then squeeze the milk out. The teat refills by itself, block the top and squeeze the milk down. So it's really just a squeezing action, not a pulling action. Cheers, everyone. Water, teat, just pops on the top. She's calling out to me and letting me know that she's ready.
So an amazing girlfriend of mine sent me these beautiful curtains. Stick around, I'll show you how I made these new beaut rustic curtain rod holders. Okay, so today I got the Alaskan sawmill going again, had the chain professionally sharpened because I was just doubting my ability, not being professional. Here, buddy. Um, and it turns out it was even worse than my effort. Uh, so what I've done, I've watched a few YouTube videos. I was convinced, convinced it was the chainsaw bar because as I was cutting, it was diving down into the wood. Now, the only way to do that is if the chain was sharpened great on one side than the other. And I know I eliminated that by buying that. Eliminated it. Absolutely eliminated it. The chain was sharp. So there was only two other things it could have been. The, the mill was out of square. So I completely stripped the mill and remade it. Digital gauge angle finder. And I was within half a degree. Point, sorry, 0 0.05 of a degree. Wind's a bit blowy and I haven't got a mic, so excuse me. So the last thing was the bar. And I just had that, you know, that, that gut feeling that it was the bar. So watched a few YouTube videos about bars and quality of bars, and they're like $200. And I'm like, I don't just want to keep throwing money at this. I've got to find it. I'm an engineer. I can find the solution. So <clears throat> I thought about, what about dressing the bar? You know, you can get it machined. I thought, well, what if I can do that at home? So. I made this U-Butte contraption. Holds a file in nice and square. You see that? Nice and square. Against, let me show you properly. Against the blade, like that. So I just run it along, run it along. I keep doing that until I get to this. A really nice, clean, filed surface a little bit more to go but i think i'm on a winner baby so stick around to the end of this segment and see if i worked it out yes so i've flattened the uh the blade off the bar got all ready to go She's um, perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. What can go wrong? So far, so good. You bloody little ripper. Done it. Did that in four minutes. See, always trust your gut instinct because it comes from source and source is never wrong. Always go with your gut, people. I knew it was the bar. I've proved it was the bar. And shame I don't drink no more, otherwise I'll go to the bar. <laughs> so let's get cutting. Now the deck's done. Next thing to do, oh, hello, Rob, is the step. We've chosen this bit of wood. It was the very first piece of wood we cut with the Alaskan sawmill. Now, I've made this bracket, it's like a saddle. It's a 100 mil by six mil flat bar, bent to the shape of the step, holes in it, and I've got a bit of uh, bar there to assist in its rigidity when I drill a hole there. I'm gonna do another one there. I've chosen the point of where I want it to uh, cantilever. Got it all nice and level. Drilled my hole. Going to put a screw in there. I'm going to level it that way and that way. Pop another screw in. 
pop another screw in, pop another screw in, pop it like it's hot. That's real hard wood. <laughs> Might turn the uh, AEG to number three. <laughs> Two more screws. And I'll do that end. That you go. Just caught this large black dog chasing the neighbour's cattle. Wild dogs and dingoes are an ongoing problem around here, so Rob chased it with the quad and held it in the neighbour's dam until the neighbour arrived with his gun. He recognised the dog and called the owner to come and collect him. Lucky for the owner, lucky for the dog. There was something else in this dam recently. I think a pelican just landed in the next door neighbour's dam right here. Come on. Come on, Maggie. Let's go have a look. Come on. Come on, Maggie. Where is it? There it is. Jazzy. All right, Maggie. Come on, Jazz. Come on. Look for a ride, Maggie. Where's Maggie gone, Jazz? Right, chainsaw milling day. Take 20. So I've ordered a new bar online um, and a couple of chains because like I said, I was convinced it was the bar. So let's put the new bar on, new chain on and see how it goes. Right, all clean, ready for the new chain. Chain's on, let's do this thing. Not for sure if I showed you, but this is the oiler. I made. That's off an old petrol uh, lawnmower that doesn't work anymore. That's a tap valve, 15 mil, 50 mil copper, straight onto the end because the oil feed, by the time it gets round, will be a non-effective from the machine that is. So they've all said put these uh, external oilers on. So that's what I've done. Now oh, guys, I started there and I'm there, run out of fuel, but so far I am really impressed with that bar and the chain. It's doing a bloody phenomenal job. And so is the Alaskan sawmill we made. Here's the oiler. Look at that, beautiful. Keeping that oil on the chain where it needs to be. Finally, success all the way to the end yes ah, i tell you what guys it's been such a frustration sharpening 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 squaring the bar off and then finally buy a decent bar a really really good strong solid bar and i did my research um to finally get a bit out of breath and happy. So anyway, let's take this off so you can see how well this surface is done. Um, how well this saw has cut the surface. Something like that. Let's turn this bad boy over. Nice. That's so smooth. Beautiful job. Woo. 
Ooh. I could not be happier. Rob's a happy man. Now, I get to go milling. Despite, ah, shit. <laughs> I was just about to talk about the heat. Despite the sun being out, it is bloody cold today. No, we snow. What are you talking about? You just about? want to show your muscles off. No, you're just an Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carry enough. <laughs> so today, you, what are you doing? I had such an awesome day yesterday with the saw and the sawmill. As you can probably see through there. I caught loads of slabs up for the deck, for the impending extension of the deck and the bathroom. But I need to service the saw. So that's what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm going to make some curtain rod holders out of some timber. And then we're going to move on to making a toilet seat. Hello. And a toilet roll holder. Oh. <laughs> So that's what we're up to today. <sighs> Let's get going then, because it's, mm. you say it's cold, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, Maggie, have you come to help? Okay, I think we've hit the jackpot here. It's a really beautiful gun. Oh, Maggie. The textures on these are gorgeous. Profile's beautiful. I think we're on a winner. Perfect. That's my helpers. Okay, so I've got my timber. This is my curtain rod. I have a hole saw. So what I'm going to do is, as I take slices of this off, I'm going to drill a hole through. I'm going to put a slit which when I drill the screw through to attach it to the wall, will clamp together and hold this curtain rod in place inside of the piece of timber. Hopefully it works. It'll never work! <laughs> So my curtain rod fits through the holes, yay. Now to cut the slits to tighten the hole up around the curtain rod, which will also be the point of securing it to the wall with a screw. Rob's going to do that bit for me because it's a bit close to the saw with your fingers. Some power. Sure.
I've made my three curtain rod holders. I'm going to give them an oil and go and hang up some curtains. Are screws there right now, darling? Love. <laughs> so now we have to assemble this, put the curtains on and clamp this in as we attach it to the wall like that. So when we put the screw in here, it'll clamp together over the curtain rod and screw to the wall. Wicked. Go on, do it. But coming off. I've gone through one chain and four tanks of fuel. But when you actually make it from a tree, it's a completely different ball tank. Do you ever get the feeling someone's behind you? Put some sheep poo on there. It's kind of like a slow release pebble. So the rain's been flooding through our property and the piglets can't get through here to the boys. <laughs> 